Got him. So if you want to know what a squash vine bore larva looks like, there you go. He is just eating away right here at the base of the plant. And so that's what was killing a second plant. So, oh well. All right, YouTube family. It's a scorcher today. Check this corn out. Here's one right here. You notice there's a tassel at the top. The tassels come out. It's got these little pollen seeds on it. And so here's how corn works in a nutshell. It grows up. Every little leaf there is a, a kind of a node. And each one of those nodes they call V, like V1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on and so forth. It all relates to a root system. So there's a ring of roots around the bottom, and there's a ring below that and a ring below that. Each one of these correlates to a ring of roots as it grows up. Kind of neat. Cool. So there is, once you've gotten the corn to a certain height, let's go over here to one of these. So here's an excellent example. So as you see these little bands here, essentially where the leaves come out, those are part of the V stages, the growth stages of the corn plant. Once it hits a certain height, it goes into what's called R stages, which are the reproductive stages. And one of those, one of the first ones, is that the tassel comes out. So the tassel grows out of the top. This is the male part of the flower. So it's kind of determined as it comes out that it's the male part of the flower. And as the male part, it uh, kind of breaks open and branches down. And that's where these, it comes out as one single stalk, which I could probably show you here. So it comes straight out like that, and then it starts to pop out. And as it pops out, it drops these little pollen packets or seeds. Now there's dust on this, actual pollen dust on this. If you were to shake it, you would see it. And this is what ends up dropping off of the plant eventually. Now the wind is what actually pollinates the, the corn. And what it does is it blows these little guys around, blows them off, blows pollen off. And the pollen falls down to the silk. So we've now got some, some corn silk coming out. And the silk is actually, which you're probably familiar with, is on the corn. So the corn grows out of the side of one of these leaf nodes. Down at the bottom usually, it's usually the first few. And so it is already there from the beginning of the plant. It just starts to grow out. Now as you can see, it's just a small little offshoot. It's really even hard to see sometimes because on younger corn it looks just like this. It's just a little bit of a sheet of leaves and those will start to grow at the base. You can even kind of see this one's growing a little bit down here and that will just get bigger and bigger until the silk comes out. Now the silk is the female receptor because the corn is actually the female reproductive part of the plant is the female receptor to the pollen that pull, falls off of this. So if you've ever pulled you know, silk off of corn, you know it's really sticky. And so this stuff is super, super sticky. And pollen, which are these little nodules here, sticks to it. And what's interesting about it, and kind of amazing, is that this actually pulls the pollen down into the corn. It pulls it all the way to the bottom and that's where it actually goes and fertilizes each one of the corn uh, pieces. So each corn seed is pollinated through one of these pulling the pollen down into the, the corn. Because obviously it can't get to it because it's covered up by uh, the leaves, the husk. See a little... Japanese lady beetle, it looks like, in there. Eating bugs, hopefully. So, this is kind of neat. This is super cool. This is one of the first ones we've got out. And this is actually how we're going to get corn. So, the pollen's going to drop from here. You can really see it producing pretty heavy. It just hangs by these tiny little strands, which you probably can't even see. 
and then the anything you know the wind kind of blows and pops that off or you can pick it off if you want and take this guy and just drop it on those seeds there or on the on the silk and it'll start pulling it in you can actually watch it as the silk starts to get pulled down in it attaches to to the silk and it gets pulled down by the little hairs into the corn pretty amazing stuff and so that's how you get a filled out corn uh, if you let this dry out this silk dry out you won't get very good germination and your corns will look you know spotty they will have missing missing corn on the cobs so you want to make sure you keep it well watered during this time so that it has enough moisture generally this plant even though it's hot outside you like high humidity during this time which it is so that's perfect it keeps the plant moist if it is super dry the plant puts off enough moisture relative to itself to keep this wet most of the time as long as you keep it water and you need wind you need wind to blow these off down onto the silk or if you want you can kind of do what i did and you know just pick some and throw them onto the silk some people will actually just cut the tops off the male parts and just start beating the silk if you got more this is actually one of the first ones that had silk that have come out but you can start kind of beating it or hitting it with it and they'll stick to it and then they'll they'll pollinate everything so this is a cool stage very cool stage here's another tip that i've heard and i've never done it myself and i'm probably not going to do it this year but corn earworms right so it comes from a moth moths lay their eggs their eggs hatch into earworms and they they find they usually can kind of smell either the pollen or the silks are attracted to it so they know where to plant their eggs um, and that's what they do or where to lay their eggs and that's what they do and once they do the, the worm will hatch go down in the silk and start eating your corn so a general way is to spray either bt or spinosad uh, they say spinosad is a little bit better than bt uh, probably is because spinosad will kill on contact and it will kill if it eats the plant so spraying the silk and spraying the tassel specifically with spinosad um, it's also organic it's an organic spray to kill the worms that do exist but an older way that my dad told me he learned from his grandfather so my great grandfather was to put oil drops of like vegetable oil on the silts and what it does is it blocks the worm from being able to go through the silts will be able to pull the pollen down through that but the worms won't be able to get through the oil pretty interesting now i don't know that i'm going to try just doing that it also seems like a lot of work to come over here and do that to every one of these um, but if you want a completely organic way of doing it, you can maybe give that a shot, see what happens. So I just wanted to show you guys that, just give you a couple of, like I said, just a couple of tips and tricks and some information about corn um, that you may or may not know. One other thing, too, that um, is kind of, I guess, controversial as to what to do. If you notice on this plant here, it looks like there's almost four plants, but there's really not. That's one plant that has a bunch of what they call tillers off to the side. You have the main stalk up here that grew up but then you also have these side shoots that come off and those usually come off when the soil is really fertile because if there's enough nutrients it will do a side shoot it'll just try to grow more now old knowledge is, says that what you should do is you should pull those off because they're kind of like suckers for the main plant but research seems to differ on that with studies that says that it does not affect yield at all and that in some cases actually if you get any damage to your main stem these guys can take over and you can actually save your crop so you can actually get some production off of these guys if your main stem doesn't produce as well also and if you have enough nutrients it can actually produce corn itself so you can actually increase your yield so i don't know i don't know the best way we're not uh, corn experts by any stretch of the imagination. I haven't been doing this for decades. This is the first year I've ever grown corn. But I did a bunch of research on it, and it seems to be that 
you know, the jury's out and just do whatever makes you feel comfortable. Well, like this guy right here is a little busy, a little busy in there, but he's huge and the leaves look very green and healthy. They don't have any, uh, any yellowing really. They're dark green and I don't even know if that comes across necessarily, but they're pretty dark green. And, um, they got a little bit of bug damage. That's our Japanese beetle problem. But uh, actually, spinosad will help with that as well. Bt would also help with that. Anything that eats the leaves or eats the plant, Bt and spinosad are really good for um, because it messes with insect stomachs. So, but I just thought it was pretty cool and wanted to show you guys that as a part of my shed wars entry. And I'll keep you guys up to date on our corn progress. Also, a quick update here for our okra. For those paying attention, we've got uh, three rows, two rows of Clemson spineless, and then one row of um, rainbow mix and some other, I think, um, emerald. And I don't know, I have to, I have to look at the good news, I guess. We've got our first first flowers they're starting to close up though they've been open all morning that one has might have got pollinated we got our first flowers and so that means we're about to get our first okra and then we start a cycle a cycle of picking the heck out of okra all the time these plants look super healthy there's a couple plants right there next to each other we don't like to thin things around here at Homestead DNA. We just let them grow and say, you know what, figure it out. But I'll be honest, okra seems to grow pretty well close to each other. They don't really seem to have a huge competition problem, at least that I've seen. Um, but we'll see this year if there's anything that changes my mind on that. All right, everybody. I definitely appreciate you guys and I uh, hope you got some good information out of this and you at least got to watch me sweat a little bit bugs bother me but uh yeah we'll catch you guys on our next update all right guys y'all take it easy we'll see you on the other side bye